Good morning. That word Jireh means that he's your provider. And, and there's a time in your life that even when you have lack and you're short, I could be on the funds, you could be short on joy, you could be short on hope, that you begin to proclaim your answer. And one of the names that, that God introduced himself as is Jehovah Jireh, and it's kind of like a rap, your provider. Like I'm Jehovah Jireh, your provider, right? And, 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 and when you start proclaiming Jehovah Jireh or provision in your life through God, this is what happens, supernatural provision, breakthrough, wisdom, ideas, favor, start moving towards your life. And he was just, there's a scripture that says, acknowledge me in all of your ways. And this is so cool. If you'll begin to not just acknowledge your way or your struggle or your problems or your difficulties, but acknowledge me there in your darkest moment, in your storms and in, in your trials and in your, in, in your transitions. This is what he says. Acknowledge me in all of your, all your ways and I will make your path straight. And what he's saying is, if you acknowledge my provision, my power, my wisdom, I'll show up and I'll straighten everything out. I will do what you can do. Give God, Jehovah Jireh, some praise right now because he's your provider. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to pray and we're going to get into the word. And we're talking about, we've been talking about the power of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit and and when we talk about subjects like that a lot of us are saying what is that and if you're here for the first time i'm going to introduce you to the spirit of god and the spirit of god is what created everything that you see on earth he's a creator he's all powerful he's omniscient that means he knows everything he's omnipresent he's everywhere at once so we're going to learn today how to activate the power of the holy spirit into your life how many want to learn how to activate that power into your life father we just thank you for this time that we have today and i just thank you lord that your spirit father god is here move teach us train us help us learn so we can see your results in our life in jesus name we pray amen you may be seated awesome the title of this sermon is from darkness to light and i'll explain it to you in just a second in genesis chapter 1 verse first book of the bible the holy spirit is introduced in in the second verse the first time God's spirit is mentioned is in the second verse of the Bible and it's really important because the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God was involved in creation a lot of us know verse number one which we're gonna read in a second in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth but we're not familiar with verse 2 and we're not sure about verse three, but I got good news for you that no matter what situation you're in, the Holy Spirit is ready to partner up with you and help you create what you've never seen before. So let's look at this, this verse in Genesis one through three, verse chapter one, one through three, we're gonna read the whole thing. And then we're gonna get four lessons on how to activate the creative power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Genesis chapter one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I mean, that's a mouthful. What it's saying, every single thing that you see was created by God, the God you can't see. That means that the invisible realm is more powerful and more concrete than the physical realm. Everything that you see here today will disappear, but God's spirit and what he's, eventually, what he's created and what he's doing will never disappear. You'll disappear off this earth. Eventually you'll die and you'll breathe your last breath from ash to ashes to dust to dust. 
But the, the idea of this earth and what God has created, the invisible created this, they'll never disappear. Verse two, the earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. So now we see the Holy Spirit introduced in the second verse of the Bible. It's talking about creation, and this is what it's saying. The Holy Spirit was part of the creation. Look at verse 2. And verse 3, it says, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And this is how the earth was created. It was created by the spoken word of God. Say it with me, by the spoken word of God. God, when he says something, it's impossible for it not to happen because when he says it, it happens. But the question is, he said, let there be light. But the deep question is, how did that happen? How did darkness turn into light? What was the power that created that light? And the power that created that light or put everything in order, the creative power of God was, is the Holy Spirit. Someone say the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit is the power of God in action. Say it with me. It's the power of God in what? That means where there is no we're in an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit is not moving and is not activated, we will not see the power of God manifested. So the Holy Spirit is everywhere, but he's not actively operating everywhere. So the question is, how do we get the Holy Spirit to activate in our lives, the power of the Holy Spirit to activate in our families, the power of the Holy Spirit to activate with our, with, with our children, the power of the Holy Spirit to be activated in our city? How does that happen? So let's look at four lessons about activating the creative power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The word activate, it means to make active, cause to act, to move, to go into action, to manifest, to reveal himself. How do we get the Holy Spirit to take action, to begin to move, manifest, and reveal himself? Now, when the Holy Spirit reveals himself, there is no doubt that God is in that atmosphere. Things change, miracles happen, things that natural men cannot do invade that atmosphere, and this is what happen, happens. The supernatural invades the natural. How many would like to see the supernatural power of God invade your natural? This is what we start seeing. We start seeing results beyond your ability. Do you know why some of us are frustrated? You're trying to do what only God can do. So you're using manipulation, you're using arguing, you're fighting, and this is what happened. It's not changing nothing because this is where you got to learn. You can't change anybody. But there's only one person that could create something out of nothing. And there's only one person that can change everything. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus Christ. So now, the, let's look at this. So now, lesson number one. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the very Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is God. Think about it. When you become a believer, this is what happens. See, when you become a believer, you're not joining a relationship. You're enter I mean, you're not joining a religion. You're entering into a relationship. Now, this is what happens when you become a born again believer or you're saved or you put your faith in Jesus Christ. You don't become a member of the church and they just put your name on membership. This is what happens. You don't become an observer of rules. This is what you become. You become a brand new creation. You become somebody that you never were with power that you never had. And this is what makes the difference. What makes the difference is that God's very spirit, this is what it does, comes and lives in you. 
And I think we need to go back because Christians are not walking in the power that they should be walking in because they're not aware of the one that's in them. And that's why the Bible says, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. What he's saying is, whatever you're facing in this world, the creator of the universe, the very spirit that created everything is in you and is greater than any mountain, is greater than any sickness, is greater than any struggle, is greater than any defeat, is greater than any depression, is greater than any anxiety. What he's saying, whatever demon you're facing, the one that's in you is greater than the thing that you're facing or the one that you're facing or the enemy that's coming against you. Give God some praise. Come on. God wants to move in here. And this is the problem even in churches when we start trying to change people's behavior without pointing, to, pointing them to the one that changes lives. You cannot change your nature, but God can change your nature and give you his nature. I know you were born a sinner, but I got good news for you. You can become a brand new person and you could be born again. Your life will never be the same when the spirit of God that created everything moves into your life. It turns your life upside down and the proof will be your life being transformed. God doesn't save you and give you rules. He saves you and gives you power. I love it. So the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of who? The spirit of who? Wow. I just like settling on that. You mean the spirit of God as a believer lives in you. Now, now understand this. If you've not given your life to Jesus, the spirit of God is not in you. He's hovering over you. He's waiting to intervene, but he needs to be activated. He'll knock on your heart's door, but he won't come in until you give him permission. So the first thing we see is the Holy Spirit. This first lesson, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God. Lesson number two. Unless there's an activation of the Holy Spirit, nothing changes. So what was the condition of the earth? The earth was formless, empty. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. The earth was formless. This word formless means confused, confusion. It was a wasteland, a place of chaos, a place of disorder or lack of organization. It was nothing. It was worthless. It was unfruitful and it was barren. So this would answer some of the questions. How old is the, I mean, the existence of the earth? Now, this is what I want you to, I don't know how old everything is, but I do know the condition of, of this earth without an intervention of the Lord. And we know the condition, some would say it was dark. It was also, that word dark means it was, there was, it was, there was death, it means sorrow, ungodly, immoral, it was, it, was, it was misery, there was depression, there was lack of order, uh, it, it was void of meaning, it was undisqu uh, undistinguishable, it wasn't, you couldn't distinguish it, it was ruined. It, so something was there, but it was out of order. Some would say something was there, but it was what? And because of it, it was dark and empty and hopeless. Now, what does that have to do with you? This is what it has to do with you. The condition of the earth is the same condition of our lives without Jesus intervening. So without it, Jesus intervening, it's going to remain dark. You're going to be remain confused. You're going to be remain in your cycles of destruction. Nothing is going to change. Your marriage is not going to get better. Come on, you, your depression is not going anywhere. You're going to remain addicted. You're going to remain angry. You're going to remain suicidal. But I got good news for you. Though the earth was in this condition, 
It didn't stay in this condition because there was an intervention of the power of the Holy Spirit. And that same spirit that inter intervened on earth is here right now to intervene in your dark, empty situation. You don't have to leave here in the darkness. You don't have to leave here in the depression. You don't have to leave here hopeless. You don't have to leave here addic addicted. You don't have to leave here confused. You don't have to leave here empty because the one that intervened in the beginning wants to give you a new beginning today. Give God some praise. Look what the Bible says in Romans 3, 16. It describes our lives before intervention of God. Destruction and misery always follow them. They don't know where to find peace. Everyone I talk to, I know is in the same boat without Jesus. So when I talk to people about Jesus, I'm not pushing a religion. I wanna, I'm giving them good news. That that cycle that you're in of destruction, misery, and no peace can be solved. There's a God that can make you whole. There's a God that can set you free. There's a God that can give you a new life. When we're given Jesus, we're given hope. We're given freedom. We're giving people an opportunity to experience change. Unless there's an activation of the Holy Spirit, nothing changes. The good news, our lives don't need to stay empty and dark. Give God some praise for that. Look what the Bible says about us. Ephesians 5, 8. For once you were darkness. It's so interesting. It doesn't say you were, you were in darkness. It's saying that you were darkness. It describes the beginning of the earth. It was dark. And apart from Jesus, your life becomes really dark. Have you ever heard this saying, I was in a really dark place? That means you were in a place of hopelessness, maybe even suicidal, wanted to give up, super depressed. You didn't want to wake up in the morning. And everything and everything, everywhere you looked all around you, you kept seeing chaos, disorder, you were empty, you were having nightmares, and it really looked like you were a failure. You messed up too bad. There's no way this could be fixed. You were in a really dark place. And if you're in a really dark place today, you're not here to just talk about the dark place you're in. Today, Jesus, through the power of his spirit, is hovering over you right now. And he's saying, what I did at the beginning of time, I'm ready to do in your life. That power that turned light, come on, darkness into light is here right now to turn your life around, to set you free give you a brand new beginning in the beginning. Does anybody need a new beginning here? I do. Praise the Lord. Look at Ephesians 5, 8. You were in darkness or full of darkness. But now in union with the Lord, you are light, full of light. Walk as children of the light. I love this. What he's saying here is you can have a testimony I was in darkness, but I'm not there no more. So what changed your life? I joined, I entered into a union with Jesus Christ. I, I, I allowed his spirit to come into my life. What I couldn't overcome, I now can overcome, not my, on my power, not on willpower, not on self-discipline. I couldn't do it. I told everybody, I promise you, I'll never do it again, but I find my, found myself doing it again. And this is what I found out. Not only was I doing it again, I was doing it more frequent. Some of you right now, you don't trust you. And therefore, you don't trust anybody else. Because you treat people by how you think about yourself. I, if you don't trust you, that's a good place to be at. So I don't trust myself. Good. Finally, you can put your trust in God. 
I don't trust me. Because without the Lord, I'm untrustworthy. Without the Lord, I'm angry. Without the Lord, I'm crazy. Without the Lord, I'm prideful. Without the Lord, I'm selfish. Without the Lord, I'll fight you. And I could promise you, I'll change. I promise. This is the last time I'll get drunk. This is the last time I'll abuse you. This is the last time I'll cuss you out. I promise. This is the last time I'll steal from you. But there's a problem. Unless you get an intervention by the power of God's spirit, nothing's going to change because it's not by might nor by your power or your self-discipline or religion. You need an intervention of the power of the Holy Spirit to help you do what you can't do. Give God some praise. There's hope. You can transfer from darkness to light through the union with Jesus Christ and an intervention of his spirit. So lesson number two, unless there's an activation of the of the Holy Spirit, nothing changes. Lesson number three, the Holy Spirit is hovering, waiting to be activated. So the Holy Spirit was there when there was dark, when it was formless, it was, it was, it was chaotic and it was dark. Darkness was raining and the Holy Spirit was hovering. What it means, it was there. And you would think, man, the Holy Spirit was there. How come it was still dark? How come it was still formless? And how come it was still chaotic? Because the Holy Spirit wasn't activated yet. This is good news. The Holy Spirit is hovering over your life. Hovering over your addiction. Hovering over your rocky marriage. Hovering over your crazy baby kids hovering over your poverty, hovering over your homeless, homelessness, hovering over your hopelessness, hovering over your failures, hovering over your abuse, hovering over your pain. It's hovering. But just because it's hovering doesn't mean it's going to be activated or manifest. I got good news. Love is hovering over you. Breakthrough is hovering over you. Freedom is hovering over you. New beginnings are hovering over you. Healing is hovering over you. Restoration is hovering over you. Re salvation is hovering. Joy, the joy of the Lord and the peace of the Lord is hovering over you. Victory is hovering over you. Growth is hovering over you. Increase, miracles, provision, prosperity is hovering over you. Waiting to be activated. The same spirit that was hovering over the earth is still hovering every single place and every place he's activated we see creative miracles I love it hmm so now the big question what caused the Holy Spirit to be activated and this is lesson number four the Holy Spirit is activated by the spoken word of God that means nothing changes in a city, nothing changes in a family, nothing will change in your life until you start hearing the word of God. That's why being in this room is the most important meeting you have all week. Because this meeting is not full of man's opinion. This meeting is full of the word of God. Now, once the word of God is spoken, the Holy Spirit is activated because the Holy Spirit only moves or takes action on the word of God. So what caused the Holy Spirit to create light? What caused the Holy Spirit to create light was this. Let's look at a verse. Let's look at verse three. Then God said, say it with me. Let there be light. And there was. So the Holy Spirit was hovering, waited to be activated, and he was just waiting. When the Father speaks the word, I'm gonna, I have the power to carry out everything he says. And he says, let there be light. 
there will be light. If he's let there be a sea, there will be a sea. If he says, let there be a whale, I'll go ahead and create the whale. But what God is saying, you'll never get a change in your life until you get the miracle of a change of your mouth. This is what's happening. We're preaching a whole bunch of opinion. We're preaching a whole bunch of self-help stuff, but nothing's going to change your life until you start speaking the word of God. You're going to have to start speaking what God says about you, what God says about your kids, what God, come on, you got to start speaking the word so the Holy Spirit can go to work. One message can change your life forever. Turn your darkness into light. Hopelessness into faith. Depression into joy. Bondage into freedom. Confusion into clear vision. Disease into healing. Defeat into victory. Brokenness into wholeness. Hell into heaven. A sinner into a saint. A child of the devil into a child of God. A word, a Bible study, a message. Today, someone's eternal life is going to change. Not because of me, it's because I'm speaking the word of God. And God is speaking to someone that's in this room. You've been dark. You've been hopeless. Your life has been a chaotic mess. Misery, destruction has been your cycle. You can't find peace. And Jesus is introducing himself as your peace, as your freedom, as the one that wants to direct your life. And he's saying in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth by saying, let there be. And today a word is being spoken over you. And that same creative power is here right now. You could check it online. It's going through the screen into your living room. What is God doing? The same spirit that was hovering there is hovering in your living room. It's hovering over your life. It's hovering in your house. And he's saying, will someone activate me? See, Jesus understood that the only way to see a manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit was to speak the word, not the problem. Jesus spoke that he would resurrect on the third day before he died. So what was waiting for him at the tomb was a word, the word of God. Now, since resurrection was at the tomb, the Holy Spirit was there. So when he got there, the power to resurrect was there because he was activated by speaking resurrection. Jesus told Lazarus to come forth, and he did. Jesus told the man that was sick for 38 years to rise up, and he did. Jesus told the man with leprosy to be healed, and he was healed. The pattern was always the same. First a spoken word, then the power of the Holy Spirit is activated and miracles happen. A miracle starts in your mouth. Describing how dark it is, how bad it is, complaining and talking bad about others, blaming people, making excuses, speaking negative, worry, etc. doesn't turn the darkness into light or chaos into order. The way to see miracles is... The way to see miracles and change your life is to start speaking the word of God over every dark situation. Say what God says about you and get what God says about you. If God says you are forgiven, you are an overcomer, you are free, you're a child of God, you are healed, you are righteous, you are holy in Christ, then say it. Stop speaking your darkness and start speaking the word of God over your life. You know why you keep getting what you're getting? Because you're still speaking what you're speaking. Some of you guys aren't addicted to drugs. You're addicted to negativity. And the devil's not concerned about you because you can't activate what's in you. Yes, you're a believer 
and the power of God's in you, but you're so busy gossiping. You're so busy talking about the people that hurt you. You're so busy talking about the past or you're so busy blogging and talking about other people that you don't got time to have God's word in your mouth to use you as a change agent in this world. We need believers that aren't just full of the Holy Spirit, but they're full of the word of God. And what they do is intervene in dark places and they start speaking the word and they give the Holy Spirit something to work with. Give God a little praise. Oh, come on. I'm trying to help you. Well, I have the Holy Spirit. Okay. Well, start, start speaking in a way so the Holy Spirit can use you. No one loves me. That don't change nothing. All it creates is more people not loving you. You don't know what happened to me. I, I, okay, tell me, but let's come up with a solution too. Okay, I know what the doctor said. Are you going to give up on your confession of faith? The Holy Spirit cannot work with all that negativity because he only confirms the spoken word of God and words of faith. Let's take a look at this. The creative power of the Holy Spirit is activated, was activated the moment God said. Until God spoke, everything remained the same. As long as we keep quoting verse 2, we'll never see verse 3. Verse 2, it was dark, it was formless. It was void. Some of you guys are stuck on verse 2, but you haven't got to verse 3 yet. In verse 3 then, God said, there, let there be light, and then there was light. Are you ready to start speaking your solution? Are you ready to start reading the word, studying the word, and repeating the word? Why do you want to start speaking the word? Because this idea, the Holy Spirit not only confirms the word of God in Jesus' mouth, but also confirms the word of God in your mouth. Hmm. Any time and any place that the word of God is spoken, the Holy Spirit will go into action by confirming what is said with signs and wonders. That is why the enemy loves when our mouths are full of cussing, doubt, fear, nonsense, vanity, human and secular reasoning, because we're not given the Holy Spirit anything to work with. All the power in the universe is hovering, waiting for a believer to start speaking the word of God over their dark and hopeless situations, over their dark and hopeless cities, over their dark and hopeless nation, the power of a believer speaking the word of God has the power to create things out of nothing. I remember um, we did our first stop the violence in, in, in San Bernardino. And at that time, every weekend, murder after murder after murder. A matter of fact, the newspaper every day would publish how many murders were in San Bernardino. We were starting to break records in San Bernardino of murders across the United States of America. Per capita, we were leading. And I remember as I'm meditating and praying about it, God told me which, what, what you need to do is start a stop the violence campaign. And every place there's a murder, let's go there and have a Holy Ghost party and preach the good news. Nothing's going to change until there's a message change. So we went in there, remember, going into a tough neighborhood where there was murders, there was gang violence, people were killing each other. And we brought in our church and first thing we did was just praise God. We started worshiping God. We had some food giveaways. We had some gifts we were given. But while we were there, gang members were standing, were in, a, they were, it was a project and they were on the second floor just looking down smoking weed and drinking 40s. So we're preaching the word of God because until the word of God is spoken, the good news is preached. This is what happens. Nothing changes. The power to save a soul is, is, is the power of God's word or the gospel in a believer's mouth. I'm not a miracle worker, but I can speak the word of God. So we preach, we preach. And then we gave an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to touch the hearts of those hardened criminals, those gangbangers, 
that were involved in causing all the crime and causing all the, the chaos and causing all the destruction and causing all the misery in the hood. And I remember when we gave the call for someone to give their lives to Jesus, one of the biggest smiles, the one that was fighting against us the most, he came forward. He came to the front drunk with his 40. And this is what we did. We shared the good news with him. We prayed for him. And when the power of God hit him, he started crying. He started crying. He goes, man, what is this? What are you doing to me? That's how he acted. He even said a few cuss words. That's all he knew. Like, what, what, blank, 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 what's going on? He had an encounter with the presence of God. See, and it wasn't an encounter with a religion. He felt the power hit him and he started, come on, God started dealing with, uh, with what was on the inside and he started cleansing him right there. The power of God hit him. This is the truth. The power of God hit him and I prayed for him and he fell to the ground. I didn't knock him out. All that happened there is there was a clash of kingdoms. The kingdom of darkness was clashing with the kingdom of light and the Holy Spirit wasn't going to be defeated. That man was defeated, not defeated to leave him defeated, but to let him know what's in you is not greater than what's coming to you. And Jesus met that young gangbanger and that day he got saved and set free because the Holy Spirit was activated in the hood through some preaching. So in Mark 16, 20, it says, then the disciples, who? Which is us. Went everywhere and preached. Where'd they go? And what are they preaching? The Bible, the gospel. And the Lord worked through them. And the what? He worked through them. How did he work through them? They were preaching and they gave something for the, something for the Holy Spirit to work with. Look what it says. Confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. Confirming what they said with what? They said it and then the Holy Spirit was activated. When we start preaching the word and start speaking the word in our family, stop talking about how bad your husband is, how crazy your kids are, and how bad the economy is, and how bad the president is. All that stuff, it doesn't matter if it's true in your life, it's not going to fix your life. Your answer is not a new president, your answer is a new leader over your life. And I'm not saying that I'd rather another president or not. I'm not talking about that. But we're not talking about politics in here right now. We're talking about the kingdom of heaven. And this is what we're saying. Until there's an invasion of God's spirit in your life, it doesn't matter how good it gets out there. It'll never be good for you. I thank God that I'm not dependent on the darkness to save me. I'm not dependent on the economy to save me. I'm not dependent on a doctor to save me. I'm not dependent on my bank account to save me. I'm not dependent on my education to save me. I'm not dependent on my strength to save me. I'm dependent on one that created the heavens and the earth. And if I'll just start speaking the word and start receiving the word, God could begin to intervene. Give something for the Holy Spirit to confirm. That's why tonight we're going to see miracles at our, our downtown, I mean, Pomona campus. We're going to preach the gospel and this is what's going to happen. Hardened criminals, suicidal people, people that have been depressed to the point they can't cope. They're going to come, marriages that are on the rocks. They're going to come into that place. People that have been homeless and chronically homeless. They're going to come into that place. People that got money, but they're empty on the inside. 
they're going to come to that place. Leaders that are leaders in the community, but they're still finding themselves. I reached the peak of what I wanted, but there's still something. I'm still empty. There's still darkness. And they're going to come into that place and they're going to hear a message. They're going to hear a message that's going to transform their lives. They're going to respond and their darkness is going to turn into light. Miracles are going to happen. Demons are going to be cast out. People are going to be healed because there was somebody willing and bold enough to speak the word of God. I'm telling you, doors are opening. Our, our young adults are going to Cal State San Rodeo this week. We're probably three, four hundred young adults. They're going to do a pop-up church in the middle of Cal State San Bernardino. The other day I spoke at a business conference. And I spoke at the business conference with a whole bunch of business leaders. By the time I was done, the man that was in charge of the MBA program at Cal State San Bernardino, he said this, I want you to come and speak to the students. This is what's happening. If you're willing to preach the good news, if you're willing to be used by God, and you're willing to start speaking the word of God over your situation and stop complaining and stop speaking doubt and stop speaking hate and stop speaking your past and stop speaking your problems. This is what God is saying. I will turn your darkness into light and I will bring my spirit into whatever place that you speak my word and there will be a Holy Spirit invasion in Cal State San Bernardino and everywhere you go. This is what God has given you. He's given you his Holy Spirit and he's given you his word to bring change everywhere you go. I love it. And we're going to end it with this. Remember, you declare the word and then the Holy Spirit is activated. I'm going to break it as simple as possible. You can't even be saved until you start confessing your faith. There has to be a day where you finally declare your allegiance to the Lord. Don't See, understand this. You're in this room and either you've had an encounter with Jesus by placing your faith in him, by repenting of your sins and say, Jesus, I'm tired of living my way. I'm tired of the sin. I'm tired of the, the cycles of death, destruction, misery, and emptiness. I want change. Now, who gets change? Those that hear this message, believe it and declare it over themselves. How do you know you've received something? You'll repeat it. Now you can leave here with your own story. And don't be superficial. This was not a Bible study so you can learn more about the Bible. This was a Bible study so you can have an encounter with the power of God in your life. There's things that you can't do. You can't turn your darkness into light. You can't turn your emptiness into wholeness. You can't, can't turn your confusion into clarity. No amount of counseling can do that. Counseling helps you cope. Jesus makes you new. He'll set you free. I'm not against counseling, but be careful that your faith is not in counseling and, you, and you're, you're sidestepping the power that can change you. Get the power to change you and then let's work on your mindset. But don't think your mindset is going to fix you. There's only one that can fix you. It's the same Holy Spirit that was there at the beginning. And nothing changes until there's an intervention of the Spirit. So how do you activate God's Spirit in your life? Look what it says. This is it. And Romans 10, 9 says, if you, say with me, if. That means a conditional statement. If you openly declare, if you say something. That Jesus is Lord. Say it with me. Jesus is Lord. Jesus will never be Lord of your life until you confess him as your Lord. The confusion that we got today is that people know their, their, their sinful identity, but they don't have a new identity yet because they haven't come to Jesus. So they say something like this, I was born this way, and that's the way I am. And that's the truth. You were born in darkness. 
You were born to be empty. You were born to be bound. You were born to be sexually immoral. You were born to be prideful. You were born to be selfish. But understand, that's your natural or human nature. But gee, that describes who you were before an intervention. But I got good news for you. That's how you were born. But you could be born again. And God's Spirit could come inside of you and make you a brand new person if you're willing to do this. Look what it says. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That means you'll be delivered from the molestation of the enemy, including demons. You'll be set free from the misery caused by your own sin. You'll be saved by the penalty and power and presence and pleasure of sin. You'll be made whole. You'll be made righteous. You're going to be blessed in this life and the life to come. You're going to experience absolute fullness of life that belongs to God alone through faith in Jesus Christ alone. You'll receive a gift of eternal life. Salvation is the present possession of every single person that proclaims Jesus the Lord. This can happen to you right now. Today's your day. 4 and verse 10. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. By openly declaring with your mouth your faith. It's kind of like this. When me and my wife got married, it, was, it wasn't like we are sitting there silent. We began to say some vows in front of everybody. Say, for better, for worse, in sickness and health, till death do his part. Baby, I'm going to be there for you until we die. God, join us together. Intervene in our lives. We give you our marriage. We give you our lives. There was a lot of things said in that marriage, in that, in that marriage ceremony. And what was happening is that we were saying it, the Holy Spirit was activated to help us fulfill it. You can do this. Not your power. He's going to save you. You come with your darkness. You come with your confusion. You come with your misery. You come with your cycles of destruction. Confess Jesus as your Lord. Your Lord. And he'll be your Lord. And he will save you. And he will fill you with his spirit. The spirit of God in you will change you and give you ability that you never had. So you, if you're in this room, you say, Pastor, I want change in my life. And I feel I'm in that place that the earth was. Darkness, misery, chaos. And I want forgiveness. I want a new beginning. I want freedom. I want a new start. I want the peace of the Lord. I want eternal life. And I want to know if I, want to know if I were to die, i go to heaven. You're never going to go to heaven unless you give your life to Jesus. There's no other way to get to heaven. It's not your good works. It's not joining a church or being a good religious little boy. How you're going to do this is by realizing I'm dark and confused and I need an intervention. There's only one name to call on to be saved and put your faith in, and it's Jesus Christ. And he not only forgives you, he transforms you. He not only sets you free, he invades your life. And now you can finally say, what's in me is greater than what I'm facing. And until you have Jesus in you, what's out there is greater than you. And you're, over, you're overwhelmed, you're tired, you're out. But God is saying, I see you, not to judge you. I see you and I want to help you. So when I count to three, say, Pastor, that's me. I want to be saved today. I want God's spirit to intervene in my life. I want a new beginning. I'm going to count to three. And don't you be embarrassed because this is the greatest decision you'll ever make. And when you stand before God, you're not going to stand with anybody else. It's going to be between you and God. It is a personal relationship with God, but this is what he says. Whoever confesses to be me for men, I'll confess before my father. Imagine me getting married with Lisa and say, let's do a secret. I don't want anybody to know you're my wife. She'd say, she would, she would say, she would just say, let's not get married then. If you're not proud of me, Jesus is proud of you. He died publicly for you. Will you give your life to Jesus publicly and say, I give my life to Jesus. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. One. Activate the power of change in your life. Activate eternal life in your life. Activate some, two. When I say three, raise your hand. If you want to recommit your life to Jesus or you're saying, I want Jesus to come into my life. I want to be saved. I need a new beginning. I want to be set free. Today's your day. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. I see all those hands in the back. I see the hand. 
See the hand? Proud of you. I see the hand. Anybody else? Proud of you over there. Proud of you, honey. I see that hand. Anybody? I see that hand. Proud of you. I see the hand in the back. I see that hand there. This is your day. I want those that raise your hands. I want you to do one more bold thing. I want you to stand up right now where you're at. If you raise your hand, just stand up. And this is what you're saying. I'm standing up for Jesus. Come on. You stood up for a lot of stuff. It's time to stand for Jesus. And I want you to do me one more huge favor. Will you come forward right here? Just take a walk up here. I just want to pray with you. We're not going to embarrass you. We're going to pray with you. And this is your first step of your walk with God. Faith without action produces no results. There has to be a time that you take action. Let's give the Lord a hand. He's a good God. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, big miracles are happening because the word of God was spoken. Come on, someone's life's gonna change, someone's marriage is gonna change, someone's destiny is gonna change, someone's come on, someone's children is gonna change as a result of this. Okay. Remember, tonight at six o'clock, we're gonna be doing crossroads between heaven and hell. This is what I advise you to do. Go on the app and reserve your seat. Because when you reserve your seat, you'll be the first in line and get in. I'm telling you, it's gonna be packed out. So you could show up without a reserved seat and we're going to do everything to accommodate you. But those that reserve their seats, they'll be first in line to get in. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have four showings. That's it. You want to make sure you show up if you can and bring somebody with you. Okay, let's pray. I'm proud of every one of you today. We're going to pray right now and we're going to give our lives to Jesus. If anybody came with you, just wait for them. And you're going to do this by confessing Jesus over your life. The Spirit of God is hovering right now over you right now. He's not hovering over you to judge you. He's not over, over, hovering over you and talking about how dark your, your life is and you made so many mistakes. He's hovering to turn your darkness into light, to change your life forever, to set you free. And whatever mistakes that you've made or sins you've committed, repent of them today. That means I'm done doing it my way. Turn to Jesus and he'll forgive you and cleanse you of every single sin you've ever done. He'll also give you power to say no to the sin that you've been addicted to. I know the sin has been pleasurable and it's been an escape, but it's destroying your life. And God's showing you that right now. Don't stay in the darkness. Come to me. I'll give you a new life. There's not an addiction that Jesus can't break. There's not a hurt that Jesus can't heal. None of you are an accident. None of you are a mistake. You were created by God. He loves you. And today's your day where you're allowing God's spirit to intervene into your life by your faith and your action today and your declaration. So let's pray. And as you pray this, God's going to save you, set you free, forgive you, and give you the free gift of eternal life. And his spirit is going to come inside of you to make you a new person. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for giving me this message today, for speaking this word to me. Forgive me, Lord, for living a life of sin. I've done it my way. It's been so dark, so chaotic, and my life's been empty. But I thank you that you love me so much that you gave me an option. Today, I open my heart and I ask you, Jesus, to come in and make me a new person. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I believe that you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. You conquered death to give me eternal life. I no longer need to live in guilt and shame because you paid the price of every wrong I've done to give me freedom and a new life. Jesus, today I confess that you're my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died and you rose again. And today I receive the free gift of eternal life. I am saved. I'm born again. Holy Spirit, come live inside of me. I am born again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Now, everybody that prayed, we're going to pray with you.
sign up for your next step. We got Holy Warriors coming up, classes. We got a lot of great things for you. This is the beginning. You've been transformed and saved. Now you need to start working on transforming your mind every single day. Give us a year of your life, and I guarantee you this, nothing, your life will never be the same again. One year, coming to church. Join the classes. We love you so much. You need prayer for anything. Come forward. That same spirit, that same spirit that created everything and resurrected you from dead is here for whatever situation you're dealing with. Today's your day to activate the power of God through prayer. All you need is someone to agree with you and your life will never be the same again. Love you guys. God bless you.